Thanks for joining me for a special edition of Face to Face. I'd like to welcome President of the University of California, Michael Drake, my boss. Welcome, President Drake. You. Good to see you, Chancellor. Nice to be here. Good. Yeah, I have some really f fast questions for you. Uh, you can take as long as you want to answer them, but we're, Great. we're intended this to be a little bit uh, fun, uh, or a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> What has been your biggest impression of UC Davis during your day here? Well, it's been wonderful coming back to Davis after uh, several years of not having been here. The thing I've been impressed with most, two things. One, the growth of the campus in the years that I've been gone. It's an incredible to see the things that, that have happened here. And second, I've been, I was really impressed with the students and their um, um, COVID compliance uh, uh, behavior. This is a very safe community, and it's safe because of the way people are behaving, and the, the, everyone, students, faculty, and staff, but particularly students walking to class, all um, minding the precautions and taking care of themselves and their community. That's, that was quite impressive. Appreciate those comments. We take a lot of pride in that, so I'm glad that it was noticed. What do you think is the biggest challenge facing higher education today? Well, we have a couple of, of, of whopping big challenges. I mean, our whole world is faced with the challenge today of still getting through the pandemic. And so I think that's our, our daily work to get through that. For higher education, you, you know, the, the cost of higher education, the availability of housing to support our students are things that are big challenges. But I think actually the future is very bright for higher education. We have the most diverse class in our history admitted this, uh, this fall. Our graduation rates are at all-time highs. Our, our research is at an all-time high. The impact of the university on the state of California is the best and strongest and most profound that it's ever been. So we have challenges, yes but we have great opportunities and we have the people to meet those challenges. I'm really pleased to hear the optimism because I share it. I think there's right. the free future is bright for higher ed and for the UC in particular. So when you're not busy being president, what do you do for fun? You know, you, that's, that's a trick question, isn't it? Uh, you, you know, we, I, I tend to stay, the, the, the job tends to keep one busy all the time, but things that I like for fun, um, I'm a, a, a sports fan and al always have been, so I enjoy, uh, enjoy sports. I en enjoy music, I, I have, and, um, and, and my wife Brenda and I have been out to see some live music uh, just a little bit ago. It was great to be able to do that in a fully vaccinated, fully masked uh, uh, setting, but it was really great to be able to do that. We also enjoy uh, uh, movies and art, and um, so those are things that we've enjoyed for, our, for decades and love those things. And I always liked traveling before that's that that's come down a bit but i'm looking forward to the world opening up a bit so we can get back out on the road i share a lot of that live music and movies were the things i missed the most during the pandemic mm. uh, what do you love the most about your job Gosh, the the most the thing that's the best about the job is the is the people. Uh, the our community has in, in wonderful people, um, in, incredible faculty, changing the world, really dedicated uh, staff that are the the backbone of the university. Today, you and I were together with some of our amazing students who really have bright eyes, uh, focused on the on the future, and the, it's it's just been great being able to come back home and and to be. Have, have the privilege of working with, with, with all the people here at our university. Great answer. Uh, on sort of the flip side of that question, what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about what you do as president of the University of California? Yeah, se t t seriously, I think the biggest misconception is that the university it itself is an entity that we seek to um, uh, build or, or protect rather than a, a vehicle to really support the great work of our of our faculty and our students and our staff in in service of our broader communities, and we're we're here to do the work of educating students, preparing them for the world, supporting faculty, being a great employer, lifting the quality of life in our communities. So our our success is when everyone does does better, and, and um, sometimes our our size and success make people think, well, that that's that being successful. Um, that we're the, the 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 goal that the university being successful is the goal somehow the goal really is the people who work with us in the communities we live in being successful and um we'll try to continue to exhibit that and to live that as you say service is the most important uh component of all of that and i agree with that uh what's on your playlist right now you know, I was listening to um, who did I, I listened to um, Olita Adams uh, uh, just uh, th these last couple of days, and and 
Um, there's a great. Um, uh, I was listening to a song called. I was thinking about the called the Waters of March. It's a Brazilian song. It's a great um, a great song. I was listening to different versions of it, uh, and there's a great uh, Alita Adams, uh, John. Um, uh, I'm sorry, John Al uh, Jarreau uh, version that I was listening to just um, uh, on the on the airplane last night, and um, yeah, that's uh, um, Heather Hadley. I also was listening to lately. Just those just those are people I was on the airplane last night and those are people I listen to on the on the airplane I've been also listening the the, the act that we saw when I said we went to live music about um, a month ago at SF Jazz we went to see Pat Matheny who I hadn't seen for about 25 or so years and it's uh, great to see him in this phase of his career still really uh, legendary re- really out there um, not, no one like him and so I really had a, I enjoyed that very much as well I, I recognize all four of those names because I have music by each of those artists. I, our students may not recognize those names, but Great. Um, I, I'm often told I have a playlist that the, the team publishes for me uh, every so often, and I tell the students all the time I'm, I have an old soul, so you just have to bear with me. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't mind mentioning those because those are great. They're, they're, and I'm thinking of actually doing a, a, a playlist that I, one I've used before and kind of updating it a bit. And so those are some, yeah, those are things that I would have there, and I think it's good for – to, to know that music, you know, yeah, there's good music from people that last for for ages, and I'd, I'd be happy for anyone to listen to any of those. Right, right, great. Waters so you, of so song Waters of Waters of March W A T E R S of March, um, Al Jarreau, Alita Adams. I'm gonna look it up. Okay. Um, speaking of music, though, if you could go to dinner with any musical icon from the past, who who would it be? Gosh, um, you know I've uh, uh, I, I like l- lots of them, and so I couldn't pick one. Uh, uh, y- you know, um, probably uh, probably I, Miles Davis is who I'd spend the time with. I know Miles was difficult. Um, uh, I have uh, claimed the fame. I had dinner with Herbie Hancock uh, a few years back, and uh, I, I have a small dinner. I mean, uh, four people. So um, uh, that, that you know, I, I've, I've gotten to meet some jazz people in the past. But Miles would be an interesting one uh, uh, to meet. Um, yeah, I mean, Miles. Is, I think Miles is who that's that's who comes to mind. And uh, yeah, Miles would be great. That's a great choice. And I've met Herbie as well. He's an engineer, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, from Drunel College, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so uh, as we end this uh, year, 2021, and move into 2022 and the new year, what advice would you have uh, for our community here at UC Davis for the coming year? Yeah, I mean, I feel a little uh, funny saying this, but, you know, keep on doing what you're doing. You're all doing great. Uh, this community is really thriving. It's uh, setting the, the the mark for so many people in the, the things you've done with COVID had been really a national model. The graduation rates, the matri- all the, the things that are working for your students being more and more successful as, you, as you're going forward. I've, honestly, I'm very excited about Aggie Square and, and, and the impact that, that, that the university is having on the greater Sacramento area. Um, the, I was at your health center, as you know, a couple of um, months ago, and the work that you're doing there to help keep us safe and, and keep us healthy. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, really more the same. The, the university is really thriving and, and really a, a great beacon of excellence for, for our state and for the nation. Well, I really appreciate all the kind words and all your support in helping us to make all those things happen. And, and thank you, President Drake. This has been fun. And thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time on Face to Face.